gentlemen, we would like to congratulate and pay tribute to a very dear friend from way, way back. And I see a lot of people here from who way look way. like they've been from <laughs> way, way back. Welcome to my book launch. I'm Angela Stewart Santiago. I have been writing revolutionary books, five stories of incarceration, exile, murder, and betrayal in Tayabas province, 1891-1980, for the last 10 years. Uh, this is based on my Lola Concha's memoirs, written when she was 88 to 92, that I transcribed in its entire, entire Spanish and which my mother translated into English in the late, in the 1980s. And which, when I started encoding and editing, I realized to be so full of important stories from the friars to Quezon's, to the revolution, to the Philam War, to the time of Quezon and the Commonwealth, and then the guerrilla war, the Japanese time and the guerrilla, and then Maxai Sai's the Taihu campaign. And so I decided to excerpt from my Lola's memoirs and put together a book on these five particular stories that touch on our political and social history. And it turned out quite wonderful. I'm Karen Bertelsen Cardenas, the first cousin of Angie, our mothers or sisters. What I did for the book, um, and I had known for a long time that Angie was working on the book because um, in 2002, my mom and I came out with, I won't say um, the, the first of the series, because it's not really a series, but the first book based on the memoirs of my grandmother. And that was more a telling of the story of my Lola's life up to the time she married my Lola. So I knew that Angie was working on, on a book because my mom had, had told her back then, well oh, Angie, it's your turn now to do the rest. Because we were a little worried about how to handle the material that came after that, the time of the Americans, modern times, etc. So Angie had been working on it and I was always curious about her take on the book, how she was going to handle it. And she, Angie being Angie, and her UP roots, I guess, and um, her pagkarebelde, or radical, really shows through the book because she looks at it from the perspective of politics and more than a lyrical or romantic take in my Lola's life, which the first book was. This is really a book that deals with the nitty-gritty of politics, local politics especially, of government, of relationships with the colonial powers. So it's very fitting, it's very Angie, the book, actually, their take on the book, on my Lola's memoirs is very fitting. I'm Katrina Stewart Santiago. I technically am project manager for the publication of Revolutionary Books. But in reality, I'm really just Puno Kabala for the whole production. I put together the team that put together the whole book from the layout of the designer, the illustrators. Um, I conceptualized the whole production process with her. So she had a soft copy of the manuscript, I read through it, and I suggested that we self-publish it. And I think that's what's crucial to the book's production. And that's what I'm most proud of in terms of my role. Well, the epilogue, 
have dedicated to Lola Concha. And so please join me, let's all drink to Lola Concha and to Elias, please. Of course, I had to document it in the sense of uh, reading as many history books as I could, finding as many credible history books as I could to buttress the story, to support the story. And so I have voluminous endnotes that I hope everyone looks into because it's like a, a lesson in Philippine history, other besides my Lola's story. Um, you know uh, it's the kind of history that has never been written. Most of it is not in the history books of Constantino or Adoncillo. Most of it is a tape on Manuel Quezon, Magsaysay, and others that is completely different from the conventional take, which is that they were the best of our leaders, when actually they were leaders with feet of clay. It was, it was nice. It was very nice working with her. I, w I would do it again anytime. I'm really glad that it came out. I'm really happy for her because it's been something that she's wanted to complete for her mom for the longest time. And I'm really glad that she's, she's finally come out with it. And it's a really interesting book, actually. I've been telling all my friends, read it. You know, because the stories are really interesting. In fact, one of my friends who was here said, Ay, tama pala si Carlos Seldran. Wala niya talaga yung mga fraile. <laughs> I said, yeah, talaga. You know, so it's, it's, it's a book that's about my family, our family. But I think it's a book that can be appreciated by anybody because it tells stories of the Philippines in, the, you know, in our past that you'd never hear, that you'd never know. That I, things like that really happened or you know, that's that's the way it was pala you know because you don't hear it from history or you hear it from grandparents but here it's very intimate and my lola really told it in detail and angie has really put an interesting political slant i feel that this is also what's special about it it's the fact that instead of giving you a straight historical narrative that has a tendency to be long and arduous and long, with just those five stories and tying them together very quickly across the world works at making it read like almost like a novel. Um, at the same time that you know it's a very personal history because she inserts herself in the narrative. Um, in that sense, I think that it appealed to me both as a scholar and as, a, as someone who reads literature because it it told me that there was another way of writing. It wasn't just straight out memoir na medyo boring or straight out history book na lalong mas boring. Because the way Mama put it together allowed for the story to come alive in more ways than that. And by the time Adam had put together the had put together the book, by the time we had put together the maps. Um, and even in relation to the cover that Murph put together, I felt that the text itself had come alive over and above the kind of text it was in the original memoir in Spanish and even in my Lola's translation in English. And I feel that that is really its contribution, not just in terms of what it is as a local regional history that can stand for Philippine history. It's really in terms of the form, that this is a form that isn't generally accepted by those who write history and those who write literature and memoirs, but it is a form that works. Etc. We decided to self-publish. Ako yung bumuo ng libro. 
from yung manuscript tapos ginawang text body tapos ako rin yung kumuha ng mga mapa sa kanong mga character family trees in sa libro so 408 pages siya ginawa ko na apat na buwan more or less tapos tumaba ako na nagkain ako siguro ng mga 10 to 15 pounds sa buong apat na buwan na pagtrabaho kasi hindi ako ano mga boxers lang ako nun <laughs> Kasi mainit sa kwarto. <laughs> Saging email lang kami dalawa na whole time. Hindi kami nagkita. Hindi ko siya nakita yung nakaboxers. Which is a good thing. Pero natapos namin. Ako yung gumawa nito. Ito. Uh, lahat. Full of cover. Tapos, um, ngayon ko lang namin si Nina. So, may sumit. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Tapos, uh, yun lang. Uh, Nag-ask ko na nagawing na gawin illustration yung um, sculpture ni Elias dun sa bahay na ancient house ni sa, sa Chacong. So, and they're knowing ko siya. Okay naman. Tapos, ginawa niya yung book design itself. So, yung mga kulay, yung font. Um, yun. Gumawa rin ako several studies, pero ito yung pinaka-the best. Ito yung una, pero ito yung pinaka-the best. Kaya, ayan. We were able to ask people to do short blurbs on the book. So, at the back, you have National Artist Building of Columbera. Um, you have Scholar and Critic Elmer Cordones. You have Tayabasin or fellow Tayabasin Bimladera, who is also a teacher in UP. Um, you have Historian Flora Kimian. And those four read the text without having a sense of the original memoir or its translation. And they read it very differently from each other. If you look at those blurbs at the back of the book, they read it very differently from each other, but all of them hit on the fact that as far as form was concerned, it was a fantastic form to tell his story. Also, absolutely proud that um, Reynaldo Eleto was able to do the formal for the book because he's really the one historian that we felt would understand the kind of narrative that Mama put together based on the original memoirs. Um, he has his heart also in regional history and in the telling of histories that are very personal and that are about anonymous personalities that actually affect history or are affected by it. And so we felt when we finally got the foreword from Ileto, because it was the last one that came in, um, it was just it more than relief that we had the foreword. It was really just an amount of pride in the fact that we got it and that he loved it and that he thought that the form was as fantastic as the content was. The book is available not in the bookstores. Um, we don't really want to deal with bookstores mainly because it will mean that the prices will hike up too much and I don't want to deal with consignments etc. Um, we're touring the book which is where we are now. Um, uh, Manila Art was kind enough to have us do a signing today and so here it's still the launch price, but after today or outside of any of the book signings that we're going to be doing, or hopefully going to be doing, um, it will be at 350 bucks. You can order via the website that's revolutionaryrootsbook.com. We have a Facebook page, it's just a facebook.com slash revolutionaryroots. Um, you can contact me, um, you can contact us through any of the emails that have been published online. And We'll find a way to get the book to you and if we have to ship it, we shall. And we're looking at doing ebooks soon enough so that the ones who would rather get it on their iPads or their Kindles will get it soon.